Now the third reason researchers conduct statistics is to test assumptions associated with another statistical analysis. That is, you might have a primary statistical analysis, which is the really the central interesting statistical analysis, and there are assumptions associated with that statistical analysis. And some of those assumptions need to be tested with statistics themselves. So you already know one assumption associated with statistical analysis, which is based on samples, and that's random sampling. But random sampling isn't tested statistically. Either you used a random sample or you didn't. It's a qualitative determination. But in addition to random sampling, there are many, many assumptions associated with various statistical analyses. And so virtually all statistical analyses have assumptions that need to be met. And those statistical assumptions are probably statistical in nature. And we have to run those analyses to see if the assumption has been met. And so we need to do that because we want to infer our results from the sample to the population. And in order for us to actually make that inference justifiably, assumptions need to be satisfied. Random sampling is one. I mentioned we almost always violate that assumption. Now there are other very specific assumptions associated with specific analyses. And you need to satisfy those assumptions with those analyses in order to interpret the results with confidence. And that's what I mentioned here is that they have been developed to determine whether the particular analyses assumptions have been satisfied. Now, I mentioned in the textbook that this is probably not the most interesting aspect of statistical analysis, testing assumptions. You know, in my opinion, it's not. But the consequences of violating assumptions when you apply a statistical analysis can be very serious. And I would suggest that much of the global financial crisis or the Great Recession, as people call it, was in part caused by negligent statistical analyses with respect to not taking into consideration assumptions associated with the model building to determine the risk associated with various investments. So it can have very serious consequences. Now, in other cases, the violation of assumption is not as serious. And I try to cover that through the textbook across all analyses, when an assumption is really serious and you just can't get around it, and when another assumption is perhaps a little bit less serious and you can get around it. I also wrote the textbook in such a way that the assumptions are covered after I do the primary statistical analysis, and that's because I just find assumption testing a little less interesting than the primary statistical analysis. It's not because I think assumption testing is not important. So that's the third reason we conduct statistics, to test assumptions.